Like what? You're telling me now I, I might not have sex and now I have to come and like just serve? Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is another holly jolly episode of Fundy Fridays. And here on my channel I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, American conservative politics, sometimes deconstruction, and just a lot of like really cool and interesting stuff. So it's great. And today I am doing a Three cool. Not a trilogy because I'm gonna make more to the Girl Defined episode and that is always a fun time and I also didn't realize how long it had been since I made a Girl Defined episode so definitely do not let me go another year without doing that again. I highly recommend that you watch my other two Girl Defined videos. You can really see how far the Bundy Snark community has come. You can see how confident I am now. And you get to also see Mustache James in one of them. So that's always fun. But in those episodes called Girl Defined and Girl Defined 2 respectively, I sh read a lot more of their old deleted blog posts. I go into detail about a couple of controversies they've had, but I'm rest assured that I'm gonna touch on all the important stuff in today's episode, as well as some new stuff because Girl Defined has now broken out of the Fundy Snark world and into the mainstream cringe culture like a chest burster from Alien. And when this delicate subject matter, and I do mean that earnestly, is not handled with the proper respect, we get rumors like Dave went to conversion therapy twice. Cringe channels pick up on Girl Defined all the time and they aren't, they aren't cool like us. I just love talking about them because they're a really good representative of the online evangelical culture that is taking off right now. It is more popular than ever. And since I think it would be hilarious to make money off of these hateful bitches, I put an ad on this video. So suck it, Bethy. That's how you work from home. And guess what? You actually get a useful product like a phone case. It's not a course about making courses. <laughs> oh, happy holidays, James. Happy holidays, Jen. I got you this present to celebrate. Wow! It's a Casetify bounce case with their EcoShock protection system. You know, these offer 21.2 feet of drop protection. You could throw it off your house if you wanted to. But we're not going to. No, we won't be doing that. And also, they still manage to offer over 2,000 patterns and styles from their partner artists, like this smiley case from Girl Knows All. Now, is that MagSafe compatible? <sighs> I'm so glad you asked, Jen, because it is. I sure would like a present now. Wow, I got you a present. Here it is. No way. You got me a Case Defy clear case. It's their slimmest case ever. It's so sleek and minimalist. Now this offers 6.6 .6 feet of drop protection, right? Yes, you shouldn't throw this one off your house. And what do you know, this one's also MagSafe compatible. That's right, so with either case, we have access to the entire convenient MagSafe line of mobile accessories. Now for those of you who like to take life to the extreme, the bounce case is the souped up mobile combat armor you've been waiting for. With the power of Casetify's EcoShock impact absorber, these cases deliver a whopping 21 feet of drop protection and are test dropped over 150 times to ensure maximum reliability. Liability. And all this protection with over 2,000 case designs to choose from, along with a full range of personalizations at your disposal. But for those of us more like myself who just enjoy watching other people fall from incredible heights, then you ought to take a look at the new clear cases. These offer the slimmest and most ergonomic profile in the Case Defy lineup, while still maintaining 6.6 .6 feet of drop protection for all of your regular, non-extreme needs. And Case Defy clear cases are also optimized to prevent yellow over time. Casetify continues to partner with a huge variety of diverse artists from around the world, like legendary Japanese fashion designer Yoji Yamamoto, who brings along his love for dark tones and slick minimalist iconography in his new collection. Jen and I have recently fallen in love with their line of carrying straps, which all work interchangeably with these cool little Casetify hooks to give you maximum mobile availability and safety. 
Well, James, I think I'm going to put these gifts to the test and see if they can withstand a, a mighty throw into a, a Christmas tree. Absolutely. I want you to know that your phone is protected by my gift. All right. No cracks. Marshy, it's good to go. I believe in my gift. Look at that. Good to go. Phone protected by the best case you can gift your friends and family. You should go to casetobuy.com slash Fundy Fridays to get 50% off your next order of a phone case or mobile accessory. I like that one a lot. We should make that a thing. Okay. Curl Defined is a nonprofit ministry run by Kristen Clark and Bethany Beal. It was formed in 2014 with the mission statement of teaching young girls about God's so-called perfect design for women. Depressed, unloved, alone. Sadly, the beauty and fame wasn't enough to satisfy her. Marilyn Monroe committed suicide at the young age of 36. If Marilyn Monroe had everything a woman could dream of and it still wasn't enough, what does that mean for average everyday girls like us? Like Marilyn, millions of women are searching for their identity. Women all across the globe are asking the same questions. Am I valuable? Am I beautiful? What's my purpose as a woman? How can I find lasting fulfillment? The problem isn't that we're asking these questions. The problem is that we're finding answers in all the wrong places. We're looking to the culture for answers about our identity. We're allowing the culture to determine what it means to be beautiful and successful. We're letting the culture define what it means to be a woman. Despite all of our searching, something isn't working. Women today are feeling more insecure, depressed, discontent, and unloved than ever before. It's time for something better. After searching for answers ourselves, we've uncovered truths that have radically changed our lives for the better. Truths that have transformed our view of womanhood into something significantly more fulfilling. Instead of defining our worth, purpose, and identity according to the culture, we are now defining it according to God's word. Join us on a liberating journey toward a radically better vision for femininity, one that ends with the kind of hope, purpose, and fulfillment we've all been yearning for. Since their humble beginnings on YouTube, Girl Defined has created an entire empire, honestly. They've got podcasts, coloring books, conventions. They've done all kinds of different interviews with um, different conservative commenters, including Allie Beth Stuckey. I just wanted to tell you about something that I found completely randomly, and I thought it would fit perfect in this section, talking about all of Girl Defined's media things that they do. So you know they have quite a few books that they write. Did you you know that they used to be at least available at the Christian clothing store Altered State. Also how many of you didn't know that Altered State was Christian? Y'all we are so excited because we just pulled up to Altered State which is a store that just started carrying not just Love Define but Girl Define too so both of our books. So we are headed inside to check out both of our books and see them for the very first time in ah! person. <laughs> Okay, also I just found Love to Find on the bookshelf. So if you come to Alternate State, you're gonna to wanna to look at all of this cute stuff. And then on the shelf, you're gonna find Love to Find right here. And if you're looking for Girl to Find, over here, where all the super cute clothes are, here it is. Oh my goodness, right here, so fun. If you have an Alternate State in your city, you need to go there today or this weekend. Go check out Love to Find, Girl to Find, grab a copy, buy it for a friend, post a video, and hashtag us on social media. We wanna see you in Alternate State, it's so awesome. All right, we are heading out. We got our good stuff and that we are so leaving. Fun. It was such a blast, y'all. There's the go store. Go check There's out us. Altered State. Go, go visit check it out. a city. Check in, it out. A go city. Go store. visit a store in your city today. Yes, I know. Our city has San Antonio has too. If you're in San Antonio, you need to hit one of them up. And if you're in another city, I know they're everywhere. Go check it out. Grab yourself a copy of Love to Find a Girl to Find. Girl to Find's taxes for the ministry are available online. And so, of course, I took a look and I didn't see anything that like stood out to me as like fraud or anything. I would like to note that their gross income was $171,000 in 2019 and then their net assets 
after that was 138,000. Which sounds like a lot of money for a shitty ministry that seemingly only exists for atheists to mock, and that's because it is. Well, I don't think they're doing anything illegal or fraudulent, well, in this case. Bethy is definitely defrauding people with her course thing, but we'll get to that. Um, my theory is that their parents probably bought a bulk amount of their books and merch, and then distributed it to their church, and then wrote all of that off on their taxes. Because yes, they do have fans, but there's only like 20 of them. And I'm being completely serious. Can you name a single Ernest Girl to Find fan? So again, this is gonna be a nutshell. Grab the book, get it free, borrow it from a friend, find someone's copy they threw in the trash. I don't care where you get it, just read it. The oldest sister is named Kristen and she is married to a man named Zachary Clark and they are married with two adopted children. Kristen was born January 7th, 1987 and she's kind of taken a back seat recently on Girl Defined. It's mostly been the Bethy show. Don't worry, she does come back when she gets to talk about her favorite subject which is being a bigot towards trans people. The other co-star of this channel is Bethany or Bethy. Beal, and she does insist that we call her that. She was born September 13th, 1988, and she's married to a man named David Beal, who goes by Dave, D-A-V, with a little thing above the A, a little line. Once again, that's a nickname that they would like us to call them. I don't like it, but hey, I respect people's um, preferred names and pronouns, so. In Girl Defined Lore, uh, they tell a few stories over and over, and one of them being that they were supposed to be teen models, right? Um, that's the career track that they were going to go on until they found out that it was too secular, sexual, and sinful. Soft, soothing, and succulent. And between me, you, and the camera, I think Kristen was the only one that was the model. You know, not that Bethy isn't pretty, I just don't think she has that quality about her. So back in high school, I was really insecure about my pale skin because I thought that if I could only have tan skin like everyone else in the world, then I would finally be truly beautiful and I would have that ultimate satisfaction. So in an attempt to try to get that perfect look, I laid out in the sun for hours and hours on, on end, literally burning my legs to a crisp like a red lobster, scorching them to where they were literally in boils. And I actually still have scars on them today in an attempt to try to find that ultimate satisfaction and achieve what I thought was the perfect look. But what she does have is an incredibly long wingspan and the ability to be a dominant presence in the paint. That's right, despite being a fundy homeschooler, Bethy insists that several different scouts were at her door trying to give her full ride scholarships to D1 schools. And yes, that is technically plausible. I did ask James and he said that sometimes people will get scared scouted just for the specific reason that they are tall. Bethy lies a lot. I just, I just don't buy it, man. Being tall doesn't necessarily mean that you have sports ability. Just ask my favorite ginormous blonde, McKay from Jordan and McKay. He's tall as fuck and he can't play basketball. God designed him instead to raise hell in mosh pits and design cool ex-Mormon candles that donate trees with every purchase. What was I talking about again? That's right, girl defined. And did you know that there are people that didn't know that they're sisters? Which always shocks me because if you watch how they interact in videos, you can see that they clearly hate each other and would not choose to spend time together if they weren't forced to. Like a homeschool curriculum, these two just completely lack chemistry. Exposing them to such Do you guys get the sense that these women hate each other? <laughs> I know that's horrible to say, but when one of them is talking, the other one is looking at her like, are you done? Like they really, you know, and I, I'm working with Katya, I know what that looks like. Um, this is Fundy Snarky, who I really hope named their channel after how Bethany says Fundy Snark. All right, this one's called How to Be a Shady Bitch in a God-Honoring Way. <laughs> a couple first dates that I went on. I mean, you got married young, you didn't have as many first dates. Wow, bitch. Young compared to me. Um, I had a first date with Zach. True. Um, okay, I, you shouldn't I be talking, you got married when you were 30. New York has been a disaster since we moved in. We have done very little to it and needs a lot of help. I and can then the <laughs> everything just needs help. The landscape. Okay. There's no landscape. It's just awful. And so you live in an apartment, Bethany. And our house. I assume Bethany tries so hard to be young and makes Dave do things for her own satisfaction. Why uh, that? that's hilarious. <laughs> that's <a> funny question. <laughs> I feel rude. Okay, well, you do have to clarify that you are a little bit older than Dave. Do you 
feel like our <laughs> sinful side comes out more with each other than even our own marriages sometimes. Oh my goodness, absolutely. Yes. When I go to Dave, I'm like, hallelujah, I'll reprieve. <gasps> wow, you really fucking oh, hate your sister. Oh my word. <laughs> you feel the same way with Zach. We're never sad to see each other go <laughs> at the end of the work day. <laughs> If you haven't listened to the podcast that we released this like Monday, you shared your entire story. You were really open and honest and a huge- Then you um, made me cry. I know. <laughs> so go and listen to it. I, along with you, have created a mentorship course. Love just living life with this person, serving God with this person, but there's also- Fully ignoring her on her phone. Struggles and differences. And I think the biggest thing- She's is looking up new hats. In singleness, you don't idolize the season of- I think me and my husband would both agree. Like we've had a really great intimate life. Should, Should we life bring him in to, no, to verify that? Like that. He wouldn't like that. <laughs> my big top secret is that I actually bought a wedding dress when she was wedding dress shopping because I found one that I loved. I told I you. I yeah. at for my dress and I actually <laughs> bought one. That's how confident I was that I would probably be getting married like very soon right. after that, like a year or two because it was like, oh, you know, there were plenty. You loved the dress yeah, so much. I, like, I might so as much. well snatch it up. I might as well snatch it up and I felt like there were enough available options one of them would probably work out <laughs> hilarious that was hiding in your closet for years no one knew it. like the back of your closet oh my is a huge dress. It, if anyone needs a dress you're good anyways <laughs> me and dave hang out with my family a lot. they go over a lot we go to the same church they don't just... have any friends and so they have to oh my God. i'm kidding we, so th it's different though because if you really i want to see them fight so bad perspectives and we could not really see the other person's perspective very well so we kind of ended like a little bit kind of having to so a I would say not <laughs> I, I do have to admit, I was distracted when you said the day you were trying to get me to say it sometimes because I was thinking about my hat. So if you see me wearing more hats, it's because I'm trying to overcome my fear of hats because you feel like you're wearing an umbrella on your head. Bitch, Anyways. what? All right, we have a question. Does it hurt the first time? I think the answer is yes, it does hurt the first time. Personally, never had any pain. Oh. Um, and I was there you actually- go. She's like, my pussy did not bleed. <laughs> okay, time to talk about the rest of the family. Their last name used to be Baird, and then they changed it to Mershon to be more like their heritage family name. The Baird family grandfather was actually a full-blown Nazi mayor. I know you can't help who your family is, but um, if your grandpa is a Nazi, you probably shouldn't be posting like happy pictures with his grave and talking about, you know, how uh, how he had to flee in World War II. Uh, don't think that looks very good. The Girl Defined family is heavily associated with Vision Forum, which I have covered in several videos. Um, and most of the sisters, except Bethy, for some reason, were in the, uh, like, appreciation video for Michelle Duggar when she won Mother of the Year at the Vision Forum tea party. So I am just gonna go ahead and play that for you because I love playing this clip. It's so fucking weird. Thank you, Michelle. 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 The Thank You, Michelle shirt, as well as the Girl Defined inspired overweight, sexually broken loser shirt are available on bonfire.com. Their youngest sister, Susanna, who used to be, to my knowledge, she was the graphic design person on the team. I know a Canva graphic when I see one, Susanna. Her thing is that she's a little edgelord. Um, she dressed up as a Native American caricature. They have another sister who got married, who I can't for the life of me remember her name. We gotta talk about Alyssa. So last time we checked on her, she was courting a very sexist Ukrainian man. So you're not like uh, self, you're not like independent, you're not like trying to do your own thing. So you allow <laughs> to be led and you allow to, uh, for me to experience what, what, what is to be a leader, what is to be a man. So not only is he misogynist, but he's also homophobic, which, it seems like it's a requirement. Since the last episode, there's been a fucking Russian invasion. Um, so, guess what I found just this afternoon? Uh, a whole news clip about Alyssa and her husband. And our top story tonight, a San Antonio couple is among the thousands of families trying to flee Ukraine tonight as the Russian invasion there continues. The couple had plans to escape to Poland, but with traffic backed up for miles at the border and men no longer able to leave Ukraine, the family has a tough decision to make as the wife is expecting their first child. It is unbelievable. Alicia Bedetta sharing their journey that's unfolding on social media, capturing the hearts of many right here at home. 
Alyssa Petrenko moved from San Antonio to Ukraine about a year ago and has been sharing her journey on Instagram. I am married to Ukrainian and I live here in Ukraine and I am 38 weeks pregnant. In this video posted on Instagram, Alyssa shared to her 22,000 followers nearly 20 hours ago that her friends had an extra seat in their vehicle to flee to Poland to escape the Russian invasion, forced to leave behind her husband, Andre. Back here at home, her mother, Haiti Baird, also taking to Instagram in a series of videos to plea for prayers for the family. We are beside ourselves. We've been up all night praying and crying. In a rush for safety, lines and traffic jams have made it impossible for hundreds of Ukrainian refugees, including Alyssa and her husband, to cross into Poland. They are very Western Ukraine right now, and they are safe uh, for the moment. And Andre is still trying to get to her. And so um, he's stuck in traffic. It's crazy. And now... Another tough decision, as Ukrainian men ages 18 to 60 are banned from leaving the country and asked to join the army. For Alyssa, who's about to deliver, they want to get her out of the country. They don't want to be separated. Today, thousands of friends, family, and strangers pray and donate funds for the future of the young couple. It's crazy here. Please pray for this country. Alicia Barrera, KSAT, 12 News. There's a lot of bad behavior going on in the Baird slash Mershon family. It's really no wonder that Bethy acts out the way she does. She probably has to to even get a sliver of attention from their large family. Her culture seemingly only values women when they're married and have children. That's the context for this next story. That doesn't mean it's okay though. The story goes Kristen was getting her wedding dress fitted um, for her wedding, which was like 10, 11 years ago. And Bethy, who was single, bought a wedding dress that same day and saved it for 10 years. She didn't even end up using that dress. That thing in your life that didn't turn out at all the way you imagined it would. For me, it was buying a wedding dress at 21, thinking I would get married soon, only to have it hang in the back of my closet for the next decade. Because if you pulled that kind of shit at my dress fitting, you deserve to be shunned. What the fuck is wrong with you, Bethy? No, bad Bethy. Speaking of wedding cringe, do you guys remember the sexy lover thing? Because I remembered it randomly the other day. And so she put this on a like handkerchief as a gift to Dave and the photographer filmed it and she goes, I wanna be your sexy lover. How sexy can you be, Bethy? I know you ain't sucking dick. Seriously though, <clears throat> if people are concerned that we use a toothbrush, I'm gonna have to start calling all the people out who are putting their mouths in places that are much less sanitary than sharing a toothbrush. Is anybody really surprised to learn that Girl Defines message is actually more toxic than their relationship to each other? Check out this now deleted clip of them brushing off a fan's assault to push their purity agenda. I've done things with my boyfriends in the past with and without consent. Mm. I've been really wanting to get back into my spirituality and relationship with God for a while now, but I'm not sure how to even start or if it's even possible with the things I've done in the mm. past. Is it even possible to re-purify yourself from sex outside of marriage? And if so, what does that look like? I'm terribly lost right now and would really appreciate a response or even a video talking about these topics or talking about situations mm -hmm. that people who haven't always been Christians might run into. That's None everyone. of us are perfectly pure and that's the whole point of why Christ died. Yeah. We are all sexually broken. We're all impure. We all struggle with us. We all sin and need to repent of that sin before it just, God. It's different ways. It's know? just in different, it's different ways. Different. Don't worry. They apologized, kind of. As many of you know, we posted a Q&A video several weeks ago answering your questions regarding food, work, purity, and relationships. Our response to the question about sexual purity was focused on forgiveness and redemption, but we completely neglected to address the major issue of non-consensual sexual encounters, which was mentioned. We genuinely want to thank you for your many comments and concerns regarding yeah. this, and we do see it as a major issue. We hear what you're saying and we totally agree with you. Therefore, we will be taking down the Q&A video and posting a new video on Wednesday regarding the crucial topic of sexual abuse and assault. We're personally close to several women who have been the victims of sexual abuse and it is an awful and horrible crime. Again, thank you for your many comments, emails, and concerns about this, and we do look forward to it addressing it on Wednesday. All right, so that's who the girls are. What are they trying to define? Womanhood. 
because that's really easy. Um, Feminism is the radical idea that women are God, capable of being their own authorities. So basically, if you want to accept and embrace all of the ideologies and thoughts that go along mm -hmm. with fe you know, modern feminism, you really have to reject so much of God's word. Yeah, there are good ideas here and there, but if you're gonna embrace it as a whole, mm -hmm. you really do have to become your own God and say, no, I'm going to define my womanhood. Sorry, God, I know better than you. This is what I need to happen. Gender is a social construct, which does not mean that it's not real, by the way. It's just something that humans created. Gender, at least as best as I can define it, is a spectrum and it is a deeply personal journey for a lot of people. It has nothing to do with your primary or secondary sex characteristics. It's how you feel, how you perform, how you want to be perceived. I personally don't subscribe to the gender binary and I think that such black and white definitions of gender really fall flat and they do not describe or serve much of the human population. In other words, it's not about what's in your pants, it's about what's in your heart. And I know concern conservatives don't like that definition because it requires them to deconstruct the gender binary and that requires abstract thought and listening to people who are different than you. So don't see that happening anytime soon. You know what I believe. What does Girl Defined think gender is all about? Okay, another question. Someone asked, have you ever struggled with your gender? So asking mm -hmm. me and Kristen. And I would say that that's not something specifically struggling with our gender that neither either of us has ever struggled with but i will say that something we both have struggled with is more our specific purpose mm -hmm. as women yeah, now god sure. if you look in proverbs 31 in titus 2 god has some very specific things to say about women and what biblical womanhood should look like and just about the fact that he created us as women to be helpers to be nurturers things that we're going to get in into the future and i know for the two of us a lot of times we've kind of fought against that and have wanted to go in a different direction, kind of the direction that the culture was pushing us instead of mm. God, living out God's design for us. And we share stories about that in our book. So I would say, no, not specifically struggling with our gender, but maybe struggling with our purpose and design as women. Mm -hmm. That's something we've definitely struggled with. Yeah. I don't know about all that. I'm pretty sure that the attributes of the Proverbs 31 woman could be applied to a person of any gender. Matter of fact, that's canon now. The Proverbs 31 woman uses she, they pronouns and is pansexual. And I'm a reverend. Fuck you. Check out this, um transphobic and um, really cruel uh, post that Bethy made um, about birthing people and how that's offensive. To really see the full context of that, you need to know that Kristen has suffered with infertility for many years now and it's just, it's really awful for her. What do you expect from somebody who clearly has no empathy for others and really hates her sister? Like why god why would you do it this way and just being so raw and honest like zach and i in our own emotions and going to the scripture and trying to like there aren't answers for why god does certain things but just knowing he is good we can trust him he has a plan and if you feel bad for Kristen, i'm just gonna have you stop right now um, she's also terrible if you speak publicly and put your name on the line you basically get demolished culturally because that is not politically yeah. correct you are not woke you are not on the right side of history if you say anything in opposition to this but common sense clearly shows by the statistics by facts by biology <laughs> by reality that this is not this is a biological male swimming against biological yes. female and women's sports are suffering and we just have to say it out loud go it's 2022. Congratulations on all the progress we've made, women. We no longer can be woman of the year. Biological men are taking our place. We've come so far. Come on, women. Like, I don't even care if you're a Christian. Can't you see? Women are literally, like, being erased before our eyes. We like, it's a man. <laughs> Remember a few years ago, Caitlyn Jenner was woman of the year? And... A man, biological man, literally, like, competed in the Olympics and, like, was, like, the yeah. big athlete. I mean... Come on! Like, it's so sad. It's so ridiculous. sad. Wow, what an evil bitch. Truthfully, I needed a way to segue from this clip to the next one, so uh, enjoy this awkward intermission here. We are not going to give into the delusion. This is not going to help all of the major mental breakdowns that are going on in our world and suicide. Like, this is not helping it by affirming that, one, men can be women, or two, men should dress up like women and put on fake breasts that are way oversized, massive rears, you know, like wear very skimpy clothing and dance around and twerk and do all this stuff. Like, this is insane! No wonder we have problems! 
Bitch, didn't your little sister dress up in drag this past Halloween? In fact, something happened recently in our own backyard, not literally, but in Texas. <laughs> I whacked myself in the face. Okay. In fact, when I saw some articles and some videos about this event, yeah. there was a huge neon sign in the background that literally said, it's not gonna lick itself. And thus, a million memes were born with that one phrase. Have judgment. They're children. Like yeah. in so many ways, they're being, their mind is being formed. Their worldview is being formed. What they think about sexuality, what yes. they think about everything is being formed. It's like Play-Doh, like soft Play-Doh being molded and formed. And that yeah. is the job of parents to help guide and strengthen and grow their children in a healthy yeah. way so they can grow up to be mentally stable adults. And you're taking young children so impressionable. They don't really have a grasp on what's happening in the world. And you're exposing them to such sexually explicit perversion. Also, don't they live in the South where little boys routinely wear dress? of that but you know you have like the library readings drag queen story hour and yeah. just this massive over sexualization of these adults which is so creepy to me adult typically men already dressed up like women now preying on these young children you know i wish they knew that not all drag was sexual I once saw a drag performer dress up as sheldon from the big bang theory literally like parents are just handing them over and i i don't even want to know you know like 15 years from now, 20 years from now, the stories that are gonna come out. And I think there's gonna be a massive change because right now, us as adults are the ones putting our children right. in this situation, putting them They can't in even the hands consent, of, you know? Yeah, they're like, just told, this is good, this is healthy, go for it. How yeah. is that going to help them in the long run? So I think it is a form of child abuse. Bethy endorses the pearls, so I really don't wanna hear their fucking opinions on child abuse. And society tells us, look within to discover who you are. Look at your feelings. Mm. Look at what you're into. Look at your past. Look at your present. Like, look within to define yourself. But when we look in God's word, we really see that we discover who we are by knowing who God mm. is. We, but in society, we're told, you know, men can be women. Women can be men. Anyone can be anything, mm -hmm. really. And it does get so confusing. It does get so complica complicated. And if your framework is that you have to look within and you have to find and discover who you are, and now you have like a thousand options for who you can yeah. be, that is so hard. That is so scary. And it's and even if you think you find who you are, over time it could change. One year, two years, five years, it could be different. But when we look I at know. God's word, it, it honestly erases the confusion. Like there's so much confusion. There's so much dysfunction. And we look at God's word and we see the simplistic truth. truth. Also, not all drag artists portray women or are cis men. There's a whole beautiful world out there. Um, and drag is a fantastic way to express your gender identity and experiment with it and... Uh, make friends and grow your confidence. Uh, it's not a good way to make money, but it is a fun time. Not that I've done drag, I just uh, appreciate the art form. My struggle with masturbation prior to marriage impacted my relationship with my husband, our intimacy, because I was so, my body was so trained to respond to stimulation based on masturbation that when my husband, what, you know, when we were having sex, when we are having sex that I, I had early on in our marriage, I had to really almost like retrain my body to respond to my husband and not to respond to the way that I had grown used to experiencing an orgasm. And Damn, you could not waterboard that information out of me. But yes, those urges are real. Um, I remember times even like when I would feel like the urges were so strong and I felt like, man, I, I am taking inventory. Like I'm not reading romance novels or things for me that were would make it more of a struggle. Um, I would just get up and like go exercise. Like I know for a lot of people that's helpful, like a really hard run, um, you know, just doing something to exert energy get your mind off of just like, oh, like sitting there thinking about it. And, you know, even if it's at night, like, you know, maybe for you, the struggles late at night. If you know that, have a plan. Like for, you know, if you're like every time, like I lay down in my bed at night, I turn off the light, like that, that urge, that longing just becomes so strong. Get a plan of action. Don't just be a passive, oh, uh, you know, like victim to the urge every time, but rather be more proactive. Like I know it's going to happen. I'm going to anticipate it and I'm going to have a plan for when it happens. And for you, that might look like a lot of different things for each person, but have a plan of action, whether it's like jump on your floor and do 30 pushups. <laughs> I don't know. Just have a plan. You know what I'm saying? They're really encouraging people to be ashamed of themselves. And it just is really sad, honestly, to see how ashamed Kristen is and how it makes her cry and how she probably hates herself when she does the most uh, normal and healthy self-care that she could do. I want to make fun of it and I am but it also is very sad that that's what it comes to. Everybody does it so the fact that she's like it's a sin and you're going to hell and you're lustful it's just 
it's fucked up. They have a really young, impressionable audience, and I can't imagine the damage that they're doing. I can imagine. I know that they've done damage. You guys know what I mean. You know what I mean. This is the third year. Come on. I've been struggling with porn for a while now, and I don't know what to do. I'm ashamed and scared of letting my secret out. I struggle with same-sex attraction to women. Lust is almost constantly invading my thoughts. My mind is a war zone. If you're at all familiar with the snark world, then you probably already know that Girl Defines videos are just the tip of the iceberg. The real juicy stuff is on their Instagram. And Bethy has been downright feral on Instagram this year. We've got her talking about sharing a toothbrush, sharing bath towel, flushing big nasty shit, and on her business Instagram, making spicy reels. We can't talk about Bethy's Instagram without talking about her latest and greatest uh, business scheme, which is She Works Smart. Not to be confused with She Works Short, which is a hilarious fundy snark page on Instagram. I'm not even gonna give it the fake respect of calling it an MLM. Bethy is selling courses on how to sell courses. And beyond that, it gets worse. Some very smart and tenacious snarkers have sniffed out that Bethy is already a part of somebody else's downline. That's right, Bethy's astronomically expensive course is that way because she makes you sign up for Kajabi. Kajabi is like if Masterclass let anybody make a class or open mic night at a TED talk. And Kajabi is $200 a month with Bethy making 30% of that on commission. So if you're paying attention, you can see that she's ripping her customers off in multiple ways. She does not need to charge this much and it's quite offensive that she thinks people are this stupid that, and that they're willing to fall for this crap. The product is the most cynical kind of scam in that it aims to extract maximum profit for both minimum effort and minimum benefit to the customer. Doing this course scam thing and then she's also like bitching about other people's businesses like she went on this photographer's page and she's like you need to you need to add this and that and she made this Facebook group for the people who legitimately signed up for it and there was nobody signing up for it and then she started sending out these emails being like I'm changing the price it's lower please join now and it's so sad I think recently the most people that were on the Facebook was eight which is a lot more than I thought who's gonna spend a thousand dollars on her fake course. And she's already admitted that half of the things that she writes for Girl to Find in their little e-booklets are things that she's ripped off of the internet and she's charging money for it and she's exploiting people. That's why MLMs are so fucked up because they prey on people who don't have the money to be getting started in these things in the first place, but they're desperate. And somebody tells them that they can work, for, work from home and play with their kids and still make money. And it's absolutely disgusting to me that she does this stuff. Honestly, I hope she gets sued by the Attorney General of Texas just like Brittany Dawn. What the fuck is going on? What is wrong with you? Girl Defined at its core is a very shallow thing. Both of the women involved are shallow. They come from a shallow family. They follow a shallow version of Christianity built on guilt and platitudes. Girl Defined is certainly not based on philosophical complexity. They're blatantly and consistently wrong and all of their opinions are terrible. Now I want to be clear, shallow here does not mean harmless. Girl Defined is problematic in some deeply concerning ways that we should all be aware of. They have questioned the religious piety of sexual assault survivors. They have lionized their Nazi grandpa. And they have for years worked to build a empire out of lazy, harmful Christian word salad that actively tries to take advantage of struggling, vulnerable young people. In fact, their success is built on how excessively terrible their worldview is. People with even the most casual passing interest in Fundy Snark can look at Girl Defined's content and go, yeah, that's weird and gross. Making fun of Girl Defined is a party and everyone's invited. At this point, the women themselves are clearly in on the joke. You can go browse their channel right now and see. They're more than happy to toss in sexy clickbait words to draw attention and any more. Some of their videos are just blatant liberal bait. God may love modesty, but the algorithm doesn't, and we all know which one they really care about. But the secret sauce that keeps Girl Defined in the spotlight is the delicious sisterly drama that just permeates every single part of this supposed ministry. It is primarily entertaining to watch these two women, who have literally built their fortunes on the back of judgment and nitpicking, to be completely unable to turn off those instincts even with each other. Every shitty fundy channel can give you a cold take about drag queens, but only Girl Defined will pack a full drag race 
episodes worth of shade and side eye into just 10 minutes. Girl Defined is the snark target that offers something for everyone, and at this point it's really hard to tell how much of their fan base is engaged in earnest and how much of it is engaged for the purpose of mockery and controversy. In that way, our community has ironically formed an odd symbiosis with these women, and they're pro-life, so they can't abort this um, satanic fetus that is the Fundy Snark community. Girl Defines gives us a never-ending stream of interpersonal drama and an easy, accessible way to bring new folks into our fun little world. And in return, we provide viewership in place of all the young Christian women who got fed up with their lazy answers to big problems. They entertain us, we pay attention to them, everybody wins, save for the uh, mm, young people that look up to them for guidance. They're not winning. And at the end of the day, those folks don't deserve to get scammed and Girl Defined does not deserve their money. I know. That's a very big statement, right? Okay, I'm trying to forgive them. I'm trying to be Christ-like. Um, James wrote that conclusion. I really like it though. In, in short, Girl Defined bad. Fundy Friday's good. There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I actually pulled it together in like two days. With James's help, of course. Um, and all kinds of help of Reddit. I fucking love Reddit. I love it. I just love it so much. Girl Define, yeah, they're cringe, but like, they're also racist, so. <laughs> That's why it's so important to me. And I think they are a lot of people's gateway um, fundy. Next week is James' episode, and then I am finishing off the year with Paul and Morgan. And that is one of the oldest videos I've ever done. I need to redo that one. Merch, Patreon, social media. Check my link tree if you get on Instagram because I have I have articles written about me. Happy holidays, Merry Chrysler, and um, I will see you guys in two weeks. Yeah. I miss you. Um, bye bye. Be good. Be gay. Do crime. Sons, wherever you are, sisters come together. We need to be brave for each other. More oh, than society demands. This is why we're joining hands. We are sisters. <laughs> I did a different dance.